snap cap. Safe gun. Hi everyone, today's video comes to us via a viewer inquiry. Uh, whenever we get questions here at VSO from our viewers, we take it very seriously, such to the point where if you send us a message through our Facebook page, you will get a form response that basically says if this is a business inquiry, you need to find another channel through which to get that communication to us. This is strictly open to questions from our viewers. Now obviously we still want you guys to play in the comments down below. We do monitor those as well, but we wanted a direct communication. The communication from the Facebook page goes directly to my pocket as well to, as to uh, some of the other guys as well. So if you guys have a specific question that you don't feel Feel comfortable asking publicly go ahead and uh, send it over that way now that said um, today's question uh, and the subject of this video comes from a an individual who's actually not an American uh, he's uh, lives in a foreign country and does not have access to the quality training facilities that we have here in the United States and his question is, you guys do all this high speed, fast shooting, tactical stuff uh, that's you know always fun to do, uh, but can you guys just strip that away for a second and, and just do a video to teach me how to take a bullet and put it where I want it on the paper? I'm just not connecting. I, I, um, I'm having issues. Can you just do a simple video like that? And I think that's a great idea. And um, how we're going to address this is, guys, this video is no subject, or no substitute for training. You should go out and get quality training. Uh, I can point you in the right direction if you guys want uh, want a referral to you know some, you know some school somewhere. Um, you know I can I can point you in the right direction as far as some quality training is concerned. I only teach private classes. I'm just not good enough. The industry standards like seven students. Uh, per instructor, I'm just not that good. I only teach private classes. I can't handle more than onesies, twosies, twos and threesies. Uh, I'm just, I'm just not there, right? I, I, my, my personnel management skills are not there. So this is what I do. I do video instead. So uh, that said, how do we improve shooting and the accuracy of your shooting regardless of situation? This is going to work for you whether you are trying to shoot super accurately or just accurately, accurately enough fast. And this is a ubiquitous thing that everybody uh, can, can do and work on to improve their handgun shooting skills. So, when we, if you ask the internet, the internet will tell you that the number one most important thing to do when you're shooting your handgun is to focus on the front sight. And yes, focusing on the front sight is extremely important. It's, it's how you tell where the bullet is gonna go precisely, but I have a problem with the way that we in the gun community, gun culture, uh, I'm gonna use those interchangeably here, um, use that language. I think that instead of telling people to focus on the front sight, we should instead tell them to focus their eyes on the front sight because people think that that's all there is to it is punching that gun out, focusing on that front sight and the bullet should go where the front sight is. In reality, we tend to be perfectionists when we shoot and we try to align the sights. We focus way too much on the front sight and not enough on what's really the problem, which is the grip. If you fix the interface between the firearm and the human, if you get this right, everything else will be better and it usually fixes every other problem that we have. If you fix this, there's only so many ways that you can orient the gun around your face such that you can see the sights to put shots on a target and any one of them will work. So what do I mean by a proper grip? We'll just break it down. It's pretty simple. Take the gun in the webbing of your hand right here. Just like if you were going to a barbell press or something like that, you're going to put the, you're going to put the, the uh, back strap of the gun into the web of your, web of your hand here. 
and it should be as high as you can get it. There should be some geometry on the back of your gun here that keeps the meat of your hand from getting caught in the slide. If your gun doesn't have that, um, sell it to somebody who doesn't know any better. Uh, get rid of it because it's wrong. Put it in there and just close the fingers just tightly enough so that you don't drop the gun when you go like this. Don't have to squeeze it super hard uh, at this point in time. The finger should be aligned along the side of the slide like this. And this gives you, if you have to shoot one-handed, gives you a reasonable index point for your pistol. Everybody can take their index finger and point at something. Run it alongside the slide. The gun's generally going to go in the direction where your finger's pointed. The closer you get to the target, the more intuitive shooting position uh, can be relied on. Next, we fill the rest of the gap here with our off hand. Thumb goes alongside the slide onto the frame and the meat of your hand here goes along here. That is the proper hand position. So now that we've established the proper hand placement, we're going to squeeze the hell out of this thing. It should be uncomfortable. You should almost feel as though you're trying to break the gun when you're squeezing this handgun. A good indicator of this, one, it's uncomfortable. Two, when you present the gun, the front sight should seem to shake. And lastly, when we've got it in here like this, if we take our other hand away, the knuckles on this hand should be white. Again, squeeze the heck out of it. Knuckles are white. This hand over here should supplement the force of this hand. I'm not gonna tell you how much you need to squeeze on this hand, because that's all relative to, to you. But you need to be able to initiate that trigger without changing the orientation of the gun in space. So when I press the trigger, I don't need to be squeezing so hard with this hand that influences the way that my trigger finger works. But the other hand should be supplementing it. When that gun recoils, this is going to this other hand is going to take care of that recoil and is also going to provide resistance against your trigger squeeze. We have a tendency when we squeeze the trigger, if you're right-handed, well, we'll say it in terms of regardless of hand, it's going to move the opposite direction of that hand. So if you're right-handed, typically you're gonna push the gun to the left. If you're left-handed, typically you're gonna push the gun to the right. The thumb on this hand provides counter pressure to that trigger squeeze and holds and locks the guns and gun into place. It also acts, just like the index finger here, as a gross alignment tool. You can grossly align your, yourself with your index finger. You can grossly align yourself with your thumb. You can point them both at a target at once. The only difference here is they're locked together on the pistol pointed at the target and you happen to have another implement in your hand. So now that we've discussed what the grip should feel like, let's go ahead and see what the grip looks like when we're talking about putting it on target. All right, first off, let's go ahead and address the trigger squeeze part of this equation, which is uh, mitigated by a solid grip. We have a tendency to be perfectionist when we shoot and we put the gun up and we we say, and they're aligned, let's go ahead and go now. All right, you'll notice that when I do that, and now, that the gun moves. When we're talking about that target that's down there at 50 yards, we're talking three feet of, uh, of shift in that gun. We're talking, you know, right up in here, not such a big a deal. When we're hopped up on adrenaline, or we're trying to shoot fast, we're going to jerk or punch the trigger doesn't matter how awesome your fundamentals are, whether you shoot every day or not, this is going to happen to you um, when you're trying to shoot fast or you're under stress. So how we do this to demonstrate is we'll take a loose grip first off. Loose grip, just gonna lay my hands in there, right like this, I'm gonna punch this trigger. All right. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna punch the trigger but now I'm gonna squeeze the piss out of this gun.
And even at 50 yards, punching the heck out of the trigger, which is not the best practice, we want to ideally shoot the gun without moving the gun's orientation in space by our trigger finger. But if we squeeze the heck out of it and have a really solid grip, that motion of hitting that trigger moves the gun less. So that's just the first component of missing with a handgun is punching the trigger and because it's not indexed on our, our shoulder with five points of contact across our entire body, it only has two points of contact. We have to maximize the amount of space that our hands are on that, on that gun. And it doesn't matter how well you do it because you only have two points of contact. It's gonna move some when you ch punch that trigger. There's really no way to avoid that when we're pushing the envelope. You're going to punch the trigger in some way. We just need to minimize how much we're doing it uh, with our grip. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run up to the other side of the range, get some paper out, and look at a way that we can enhance our grip so that we can minimize the effect of our trigger on the target. All right, and to do that, I've got five rounds of prime here. I'm just gonna put it in this Glock 19, and uh, I'm gonna get my grip, squeeze the piss out of it, right? Make sure it's really tight, and I'm just gonna shoot as soon as my sights return back to the target. I don't care where they're at on the target. I'm just gonna squeeze it and shoot as soon as they come back down. All right, let's go take a look and see what we did. All right. So get in here close. All right, now you can see all five of those rounds, high center chest, really no reference except for uh, where the sight's on the target, and you can easily cover this with a hand. You can almost cover this. I suppose if I take it this way, you can cover it with a fist. Right, so uh, the grip itself being super important because a lot of people are just focusing too much on the sight and not paying enough attention to the grip. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put this together with proper sight alignment and see what we can zero it down to using the sights properly in addition to using a proper grip. Oh, there it is, got it. So for this one, we're just gonna put it together with some sight alignment. And uh, I've got a two inch square marked out in blue tape out there. We're gonna see if we can keep them all in the blue tape for this one. So squeeze the crap out of it until it starts to shake and go. All right, let's go look. So as you guys can see, inside the square, well with inside the square, and that is simply setting up a proper grip and then confirming where we're pointing the gun with the front sight by nestling it inside that square and initiating the trigger. It's as simple as that. We don't need to get all fancy and funky with some of the other stuff that we're talking about. If you can do this, squeeze the crap out of the gun, use the sights to confirm, you're gonna make your hits. So I hope you guys found this video interesting, informative, and helpful. If you guys did, please uh, hit that like button down below and share it around so hopefully it'll help your friends as well. If we earned your subscription here today, please feel free to hit that subscribe button down below so that we can see you guys on a future video. Thanks for watching the VSO Gun Channel, and get out there and do some shooting, guys. Ammo's cheap.